Hello fellow woodchopperoos, Chad here. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about cabinet doors. Cabinet doors come in a wide variety of colors, styles, and options. There's so many different choices out there, I don't have time to do it all in this video. But there's a couple little features I do want to point out. Hi, welcome to Cabinet King. Can I take your order? Yeah, I'd like the, uh, the maple cabinet door with the raised panel, please. Do you want that in honey or Van Dyke brown? Honey, please. Thank you. This is a pretty common cabinet door. And if you notice on it, if there's a straight line where the style and rail come together, it's typically held together with what they call stick and cope. It's a tiny little tenon that goes into a groove that's routed out on the piece. A more quality put together cabinet door might have a full mortise and tenon to be constructed with. This is the other style cabinet door I wanted to show you. If you noticed where our style and rails come together on this one, it's angled, it's mitered, kind of looks like a pictured frame. And this is what we're going to be making today. So in today's video, I'm going to show you two different methods for making this style miter cabinet door. Now as always, before we start using any of our power tools, we want to take some wise words of advice from our main man, Safety Dan. Oh, hey, whenever you're doing anything like this, always make sure that you learn your hearing protection, and safety glasses. All right, to begin with, I have my stock that's three quarter inch thick and two and an eighth inch wide. It's gonna be a two and a half when we're done because I'm gonna add the cock bead as a little decorative detail around it. But now I'm gonna run it through my router table where I'm going to put a double bead here on the inside. Now after you got your profile put into your style, the next setup is we're going to use our stack dado to make the quarter inch groove that's in here. Now it's a quarter inch wide and a 3 8 inch high for the depth. I've also moved my fence not quite a quarter inch uh, away from the blade. I got it set at a heavy 3 16 because we lost just a little bit of the profile here when we ran it through the router table. Now that you got all your pieces milled, grooved, and profiled, we're going to go on to the two different methods in which you can make these mitered cabinet doors. The first style I'm going to show you is something easily that any weekend woodworker could do to make these mitered styles and rails. First stop is at the miter saw. Go ahead and cut your pieces at the 45. Learn your instruments. After that, we're going to make some slots for our Biscuits. One tip to point out, when we do our biscuits, we're going to want to make sure that we cut them down just a little bit. That way, they'll stay out of the groove for our raised panel. Now I guess if you wanted, you could just apply your glue to your biscuit and be done with it at that. But I don't feel that the biscuit is a real tight fit uh, for a joint like this, so I'm going to secure it up with a screw. I'm first going to pre-drill it. Chamfer it. And then Drive it on home. A 
couple little tips I might want to point out at this point. I would first glue and let my biscuits dry before I did my drilling with the screw. Second, I would want to make sure that I put my long screw going through the rail and not through the style. This way it won't interfere with any kind of knob or handle that you might put on it. And thirdly, sometimes to make those screws go through a little bit easier, I'll put some wax or soap on it. Because when these babies get cooking, they get pretty hot. Hey, are those screws done yet? Yeah, they're right here. Let me get them. Here they are, fresh out of the oven. Careful, that's hot. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Chad, every time someone opens and closes that cabinet door, they're going to see those ugly screws. I got you covered. This is where our decorative cock bead comes into play. With that mitered, glued, and pinned on there, it'll hide those unsightly screws. So that was our first method that we're going to use for our mitered styles and rails. Now let me show you a second method that's a little bit more advanced. The other mitered cabinet door style I wanted to show you is the mortise and tenon. Now please note, the procedure for this could be done with the cockbeat already profiled on it, the style and rail, at the very beginning. It's not necessary to add it after the fact. Now before I start with my mortising machine, i got a couple measurements i got to set up. I first ran a diagonal on my 45. That's where I'm going to start going down with the mortising machine. Also too, I set the mortising machine so it stops 3 eighths from the bottom. I don't want it to go all the way through. Now make sure too, after you run it, you flip it around and go through one more time on the other side to clean it up and it gets it exactly in the middle. Learn your instruments. The flute. The saxophone. Now it's over to the miter saw where I'm going to cut that 45 degree angle. Learn your instruments. Now with our other piece of stock, it's over to the dado table saw where we're going to make the tenon to fit in that mortise. I set the stack dado head so that the top of the blade just comes to the top of where my mortise is. Now to get our tenon to fit in our mortise, we still have to trim it up a little bit. The easiest way for me to do this is I'm going to stack the two right on top of each other and get the corners to come right where I want them. At that point, I'm going to mark where my mortise lands. Then I'm going to move this line up here, cut this out, and then our tenon should fit in the mortise. Apply some glue and you'll have yourself a nice tight fitting mitered style and rail. Well there you are. Two different methods to make your mitered cabinet doors. Well I hope you enjoyed today's video. As for me, it's time for me to dance. <laughs>